All right, guys, welcome back to Tied Up with the Morgans. Today we're boiling and uh, we're just about to finish it actually, but before we finish it, we're gonna show you what we've been up to so far in the boiling process. All right, got a good hot fire and we are really getting down to it. As you can see through there, it's below that temperature gauge, which is good. That's a silly thing. They have that temperature gauge pretty high on here. I don't know why. Um, you see, I mean, it's a, a few inches. But anyway, so you can see it's below that, probably by an inch, which is good. So we're getting down to it. Um, we're gonna be taking this off here probably in the next hour and take this inside and finish it. When it comes to uh, making syrup, you boil it to where uh, it's 219 degrees, seven degrees above boiling point. And here that would be 219 degrees Fahrenheit, of course. Um, but anyways, yeah, so this is where we're at right now. It's going pretty well. And like I said, I got a nice hot fire. And today I hope we should get a gallon out of this, at least, maybe a little more. And I added some sap on top and I have, whew, I have a lot of sap still to go. I haven't collected it in two days and there is a lot of sap out there. The buckets are close to full, if not full. So yeah, right now sitting next to me, I have 50 gallons and then in the woods, probably another 60, I would guess, if not more. So something to keep in mind, I won't be finishing the sap on this. And that's because with an open flame like this, when it's this hot and this big of a pan, it's difficult to control that temperature, whereas once I get inside, I'll be able to fine tune it a little more because you don't want to go over and you don't want to go under. You want to get it right at 219 degrees. And that's going to help inside because like I said, I can fine tune it more. But also, uh, because this is such a big surface area, it might, say, say I get a gallon, right? I don't know what a gallon is on two feet by three feet, but it might not cover the, the whole surface, if that makes sense. So, you know, once it, you get down to this point, you're gonna have obviously a lot less sap, it'll be syrup at this point, than you did when you started. And so I might not be able to finish it on a pan like this for those two reasons. One, the temperature, it's harder to control, but also it might not um, cover this whole surface area because it's a larger pan. Another thing to note that's really great about this is the smell. I love the smell of the sap as it's almost syrup. It, it has a nice sweet smell to it and uh, there's something very soothing about this. It, it, it sounds silly, but really. It sounds silly, but really though, there is something really soothing about this. Um, it's just satisfying, but once you get to this point, it's my favorite because the sap is starting to smell sweet and it's just got a nice sweet smell in the air. You got this nice warmth around you, even if it's chilly out today, it's actually 50. That's why I'm in the short sleeve shirt. But yeah, it's, it's soothing between the smell, um, the warmth, and then also, the sound is it's you know it's boiling really well and on top of that you hear the logs burning nice it's just the, the crackling all of it it's just a great experience that i uh, definitely recommend you trying out if you haven't done this okay we're getting pretty close there's probably an inch left maybe a little more um it's always tough to tell through the steam but i think i'm going to actually empty this i think i'm going to pour this into a pot which is real nice that I have this valve here. Last year and the year before, I was having to pour these, you know, very, very hot pans, and I don't like that. It's just dangerous. Um, a lot could go wrong. I'm working in the mud. You just never know. So I like this a lot. I'm excited to use that. And uh, yeah, it's boiling real good though. And we'll go. All right, so I've already started adding some of this uh, syrup in here. Well, soon to be syrup. Uh, we're going to show you how that goes. And so once it gets uh, pretty close to being empty on some spots here, I'm going to then start adding that other sap in. Okay. Got about two gallons, and I had probably another gallon I could have emptied from there. But um, it's what, what my biggest concern here with this the valves are very nice, but I am worried about 
draining too much off to where the pan will get ruined before I can add more sap and I don't want to ruin this it's an expensive pan so uh, anyways I left probably like I said probably a gallon and I've started adding more sap from the warming pan and uh, we'll go from there now but yeah two gallons I'll take this in and we'll work on this then that'll give this some time to build up again like I said we got a good fire going today really hot and it's boiling quick so uh, can't beat that all right, while I have the sap boiling, I'm out here collecting more sap. Uh, got quite a bit so far. I got 20 gallons off of six trees, so that's a lot. So, um, yeah, we'll see how much I get tonight, but I think it's going to be quite a bit. This bucket was full. There's been a couple that have been full or close to it, but it's just a constant drip. Um, So you can hear that. I mean, it's slow, but it is dripping every other second, really. And that's how you, you know, that's why these are filling up so quick. Temperature, everything's right. It's freezing at night. During the day, it warms up, and it really starts to flow. All right, from the first 10 trees, that's uh, 25 gallons of sap. So I got 10 more to do, and we'll see what we end up with. All right, some things that really help are a uh, leaf blower. This is just a battery powered one. It's a DeWalt 20 volt. And uh, we use it for everything, but especially for this, it really comes in handy. Just to kind of get a nice hot fire. Can't beat it. All right, guys, welcome back to Tied Up with the Morgans. I got my helper with me. We just started a fire and we got a beautiful sunset behind us. Um, I actually just got home. It's, uh, it's 5.58. I just got home from a pruning seminar uh, through the Penn State Extension. That was uh, like 45 minutes north of here I went. It was a four hour class, learned a lot. We went out to one of the teacher's homes actually on her property and you know practiced pruning, learned all about it. So it was a really good class. Penn State Extension has so much to offer. I, I've taken, uh, I've signed up for over 30 classes so far. Some are like seven weeks long. Some are just, you know, a one hour course. Uh, most of them are online. Some you can go to, but the one that's that's 45 minutes from here is, is the closest one, um, the closest extension office that they have classes at through Penn State. Um, so that's what I've been doing. And anyway, it was a great class, but now I'm home. Me and Ty, we're gonna, uh, we, like I said, we just started a fire. We're gonna do some boiling. Right now we're also gonna go collect sap. And um, right here, we got a turkey fryer. So we're gonna finish, uh, or actually not finish. We're gonna get it just about finished. Some of the sap I have that's pretty close. It's like a couple gallons. Gonna boil it down to probably a gallon, take it in and then finish it off. It's just too much um, like humidity, steam for the inside of the house. So it's best to finish it off or as close as you can on something like a turkey fryer or a grill something like that and then take it inside and then that's when you really finish it but um where at the point it's at now it's just there's too much to boil off but not enough to justify using this over here is basically all just sap hasn't been boiled down this is more concentrated because i've boiled it down a lot so yeah that's where we're at Got a good fire going now takes probably an hour i'd say 45 minutes to uh, get a uh, get it to boil but still got a real nice looking sunset now i'm gonna go collect some sap these are the empties i have here these ones here have a uh, sap in them and there's a lot of sap in the wood still but uh this stuff still has ice in it surprisingly today it got up to 63 so it was a warm day, but uh, like I said, there's still ice. The sun does not hit this part of the house at all um, in the backyard. Uh, it'll hit, you know, further that way, but not right in here. There's a little stretch, the sun doesn't touch it. And that really helps me out here. And I put them together. I think that helps keep each other, you know, that they, they kind of cool each other off. So maybe not, but I think that works. 
This wagon is a lifesaver. I can fit five buckets in there, so that's 25 gallons. And it, uh, yeah, thank you, Kate. Kate's the one that got it for me. She got it for my birthday. She knew I needed something like this. I've been wanting to get something, so perfect for me and what I do around here. I love it, especially maple syrup season. Really comes in handy. So I just did five trees, and now we have five gallons total. A lot less than I expected, so. I think the trees didn't really thaw out a lot today. Uh, tomorrow it's gonna be above freezing as well, and I think it, I should get quite a bit. And uh, yeah, who knows, maybe on the end of the season, I'm not sure yet, but we'll see. And how this works, um, it's pretty simple, but you know, I just took the lid off of this. That's what I collected. And I just put this in here so there's no drops wasted. I'm gonna top this one off, put the rest in here, and we'll move on. Okay, I got, let me think, 520. I got about 23 gallons from 13 trees. And then I have seven more to do. But I, the, like I said, the first five trees, I only got five gallons. And then the other eight, I ended up getting like 18 gallons, so pretty good something that i think is essential when it comes to maple syrup is a headlamp and this is my first year with one i got one for christmas from my parents and this thing is amazing spent the last two years doing maple syrup with just you know i have flashlights but more often than not i would be in the woods with just my phone and I forget to bring a flashlight because usually I'm out in the woods and then it gets dark while I'm out there. So just not prepared. So I've always just used my phone. A lot of times I've gone off just the moonlight just because it's easier to adapt that way rather than having to pull out a phone when you're carrying two big buckets. So anyways, this right here, game changer. You can see I got a tap right there. Uh, that tree right here. There's one there. Uh, there's one there. I got another one up in there. I got two here. Um, that one I had filled up. And then uh, one there. This one I just filled up as well. But yeah, so I got about, let's see. I last said I had 23. That makes 25, because I've topped it off. This makes 30 gallons, plus probably two gallons in this one here that I can't, uh, I'm out of buckets right now, so I'll be burning. I mean, I'm burning right now, so I'll be topping that off in a little bit and I'll get this. And then that leaves me with these four to get. Yeah, so four more I gotta collect from. Four and a half, if you count this one. And then uh, all sap is collected. And that'll put me at probably like 60 gallons, I'd imagine. Not in the pan yet. So I think I'm doing all right. But yeah, headlamp. Is a game changer and this brand i don't remember it's german i know that led lenser led lenser it's an mh4 is the model i can put a link in the description if anyone's interested but i love it i mean this thing is a game changer i'm a big flashlight guy i really like flashlights you know a lot of fun coming out at night seeing different animals you know i've seen raccoons and possum and stuff like that so yeah if you're like me you enjoy this stuff okay i just counted 65 gallons right here and i have four more trees to collect from the other thing about this light is two settings well actually there's multiple i mean there's strobe settings there's different colors some boiling going on in the back here. All right, we got the uh, sap burning. We got sap boiling over here pretty good. And I just started the turkey fryer to finish off a little batch here. Uh, there's probably two gallons in this. I should get uh, maybe a gallon out of this, maybe a little under a gallon. And then uh, we'll take a look over here, see what we got. boiling
All right, we've got a good boil going here. It smells so good. Finishing syrup is just the best. I guess finishing sap and the syrup. It's just, uh, oh, it's got a good smell. I think I've talked about it already in the video, but oh, I love it. You know, you got the warmth, you got the smell, the sound, all of it. And over here, got Ty's wheelbarrow shovel. He was helping me out earlier. And uh, got some boiling going on here. Got the warming pan on top. Yeah, it's a good night. This is the key right here. A really, really hot fire. And you have a constant boil. And at first I was kind of worried about this uh, warming pan on top. I didn't think it would do a great job, but it actually does. It's pretty hot whenever it comes into the pan. Um, and I think there's just a lot of heat coming up behind this as well. And from that pipe, probably, that helps warm it up. But I, yeah, it's a better design than I thought it was. A good boil, and like I said, a lot of heat in here. This good dry wood from my dad. And, uh, yeah, it's doing a great job. All right, I'm going to call it a night. Boiled quite a bit. And uh, right now I'm just filling up this pot here. You can see it's starting to die down. This is the tricky part with this this uh, setup. I really love it. The valves, everything's nice, but you want to empty it, but you also don't want to get it down to where it's going to ruin the pan because there's nothing in it. So I try to get it pretty close. Uh, I'm not going to get all of this out, but I'm going to get it pretty close. And then I'm going to let some uh, from the warming pan on top in. That way it's not going to ruin the pan. But um, I should get a gallon out of this at least. You can tell it's nice and dark. It smells good. We're getting close. Okay, so I got both valves open right now. Being in uh, some of the syrup that, or the sap that was warming. And then that kind of creates this uh, little rotation here that helps it to fill this up faster. I'm going to shut this one off soon. And then uh, because this fire is still really hot, I mean, it's, it's all cold, but it's hot. What I'll do is I'll uh, put, you know, another five, maybe even 10 gallons of sap in here and let that sit overnight to just make sure that there's no possible way it's going to boil. Um, because it, it does stay hot, so I think that's the that's what I've been doing and it works well But I just love this nice real hot fire, you know it Makes all the difference Shut that off and, uh, Yeah, we'll fill this up just in the case that we're gonna boil off tonight and then we'll continue tomorrow. But that's it for today, guys. All right. We are going to uh, test out the uh, thermometer here. Let's see what we got. Okay, we are filtering a pretty big batch actually. This is a five gallon pot and uh, I'd guess there's maybe two gallons in here. And uh, you can't really see the color of the syrup yet, but you can tell up here, it's nasty almost, you know? But it's just, uh, that's the, what they call the niter sand. Uh, if you look at how good that first filter works, you see the difference here, it catches all that sand real fine stuff. And then this one kind of, it's like a more heavy duty filter, I guess. But this one, the uh, first layer, it's almost like a coffee filter, but it does a really good job at catching, sorry about the steam there. It does a really good job at catching that, what's called, it's called niter sand. And from boiling it, it's just kind of almost, I believe it's like sugar fragments, but I'm not positive. So don't quote me on that. Okay, so there you have it. 
got probably two gallons of syrup, I would imagine. Uh, I mean, this is a five gallon pot, so it's, it's hard to say, but this is what's called niter or like sugar sand. And pretty much what this is, is it's like a bunch of minerals and things that, um, I believe the, the correct term, it, 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 what's happening is it's like minerals that precipitate what in the middle of the boiling process. So while boiling the sap, these, uh, the sand is kind of created and yeah, it's, it's a really interesting thing. And it, it's from what I read about it, it says it can vary from year to year, the amount you'll have some year you might have more other years you might have less. Um, so it's an interesting thing. I think that they don't know a whole lot about, but you'll see this first layer here. It's almost like a coffee filter. It does a good job at catching that sand. The second one here, it's more of a heavy duty one, but, uh, sorry about the fog or the steam, but yeah, it's exciting. Got a lot of syrup on this one. And it's really amazing though, the, uh, amount of niter in that. And you can see it, it's always at the bottom. So I'll show you here in this one, just a second. This is all of that niter. This was the uh, pot I was cooking it in, and this is what's left that did not go into the filter. But it's like a thick sand, like a sludgy looking sand. It's kind of gross, but it's, uh, they call it sugar sand. So I don't know what it tastes like. I think it's harmless though, but you just don't, actually, you know, I know it's harmless. You just don't want that in your sap, or I mean, you're sorry, your syrup, because it doesn't look great. But yeah, it is harmless. Here we got a nice operation Kate's been running. Um, she's using the five ounce bottle to fill up all these glass bottles with the funnel. Ty's trying to help right now, so gotta hold him back. But yeah. All right, Kate just filled all these up there. Five ounce bottles. Kate actually uh, put six ounces in each. Uh, she had everything all measured out and uh, yeah so there's 35 of them so that's uh, right there 210 ounces and we still got plenty left we have quite a big list already of people that had wanted some some friends and family that I plan to give some to Today we're going to be pulling taps. We're going to be collecting the last of the sap, pulling taps, and uh, yeah, you can see there's snow now. Just the other day it was 55 out and my parents were gone and I was playing with Ty and Hunter. We were outside hiking in the woods and that night we got eight inches of snow. So big change. I like it though. I love the snow. Um, but uh, the trees have already started the bud and I think that's pretty much it. So uh, plus I have more sap than I don't know what to do with. Um, I was going to boil today, but uh, I got a lot going on right now, so I'm just going to be collecting the, like I said, collect the sap, and uh, just can't devote the time to it today, so I'll finish that off tomorrow, but I am finishing probably two gallons right here on the turkey fryer. should be two gallons or more of syrup, and then uh, we'll go from there, but that's what I got going on right now, so I'm going to head out and collect the taps, collect the sap, and uh, yeah. All right, pulling the taps. Uh, everything's frozen solid. So got five over here. I mean, it's 15 more houses over there. So pretty much I'm just grabbing what I can. We're making a lot of trips. And uh, this week will be kind of the end of it. I'll boil what I have left, clean out all the buckets, clean out the taps. It's pretty cool around the turkey fryer. Just the way the snow's melting. I think it's neat. It smells delicious. Well, this went from smelling amazing to smelling burnt. And I didn't burn the syrup, but once it's getting real close, it rises like this. And I was out collecting the buckets and it boiled over. It's just a mess. A lot of it came out. Um, kind of a little, I mean, it is unfortunate. I guess that happens, you know, if you're not paying attention. And uh, so now it smells terrible. I got syrup lighting on fire over here. And the bottom of the pot's no good right now. So, yeah, it is what it is, you know. That's my fault, but you live and you learn. But we're at about 218. We're just about done here. So, 
some good from that. And this wind helps keep that uh, from overflowing. That and a wooden spoon, but still it, it really wanted to. So I lowered the heat a little bit just to keep it boiling. Really hope the turkey fryer will just burn all that off and be good as new. Today is the last day of maple syrup season. I pulled the taps on almost everything but a few trees and I'm gonna kinda of go over this, show you a little bit more about everything in case you missed it, in case you still have questions. Uh, so let me turn the camera around. So the tubes I run here, I guess they're not really tubes, but I get these taps and the tube from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. And, uh, you know, it's cheap, but these are four foot ones and I have three foot ones as well. I like the four foot because on these trees, for example, over here, it's not really a good spot. It's on a slant, same with on that side of the tree, even over here. So these ones, a three foot one might not have reached this bucket, for example. And, uh, so that four foot comes in handy for reasons like that, because obviously I can't put the bucket here. It would fall over. So that helps. And also, if you have any questions about this, uh, I've shown it before, but you want to drill in an inch to two inches. Uh, no more than two inches, from my understanding. And uh, I use a 5 16 drill bit, and that's what fits these. And then a 7 16 drill bit uh, for the tube itself. The tube's just a little bit bigger than the tap. And when you do that, you do it like three, four feet off the ground, upwards at an angle. And there's a lot of different ways you can collect the sap. Some people use bag. Some people use the uh, old method where they'll put like the tap in the tree. And then above that tap, they have something that's sticking in the tree to hold a bucket. And then you'll have like an old metal pail under it collecting the sap. And it has like a little kind of roof above it. You can use buckets like these, five gallon buckets. This is what I use, this works for me. And uh, some people use bags. The people who are really serious will have this kind of tubing here. I believe it's 5 16 tubing that they use, which is what this is. No, sorry, the tap is 5 16 um, And they'll have tubing just like this, and it runs to a holding location. So you can have all of that sap flow to one holding location, such as an IBC tote, um, or something even bigger. So some people have it go down to a tote, others will have a bigger tank, bigger holding tank, it, it just depends. Uh, the most important part about maple syrup is having a good helper. And Ty knows we're pulling the taps today on the remaining trees. Anyways, so that tubing, that's something I'm really looking in, into for the next year or so uh, to, to run to like an IBC tote or something. And it could be, I believe most people do uh, vacuum it, it's like a vacuum system, but I, I think I could do a gravity system because of the, you know, where we live. A lot of the maples are uphill. I could kind of have them flow downhill uh, just through gravity without having to get a vacuum system. And uh, that should save me a lot of time. The other thing that saves a lot of time, and I don't do it, but I need to build one, is a reverse osmosis system. So a reverse osmosis system is something that I'm really considering because it's going to help cut down a lot of boiling time. And... I don't know exactly how that works. Well, what I mean by how that works is the reverse osmosis. I don't understand that. Somehow though, you have a machine, and uh, so I'm not a professional if you couldn't tell. But there's a machine that the water, or sap, sorry, the sap goes through, and it filters somehow the sugar content out. And pretty much it can cut your boiling time in half from what I've heard. And that's just because it, it'll kind of cycle out what does not have a higher sh sugar content and what has a sugar higher sugar content. So basically, somehow you have a, a system that's called a RO, or reverse osmosis machine, that is filtering out the, you know, the more so water, and then the sugar content is kind of separating them, which saves you a lot of boiling time. So I'm not an expert, if you couldn't tell, because that was a, not a very good ex explanation of it, but that's okay, and I'm going to learn more about it, and hopefully I can build my own, because that's something people do, is, is they build their own, and uh, I'm looking forward to doing something like that to cut down on boiling time. This kid is a workhorse, and he's outside. It's just work time. Good job, Ty.
That one's a little big, huh? Yeah, that's a better size. He sees the uh, smoke from the evaporator. So like I said, today is our last day of maple syrup. We had just five trees left that I had taps in. I just hadn't, I didn't get a chance to pull them yet. Uh, so we're pulling them now and uh, we are boiling the last of everything. Gonna be a late night boiling, but I just need to finish it. And uh, that's what we'll be doing. All right, guys. Well, I'm finishing off the uh, rest of the sap I have. Got a good fire going. And uh, we're boiling what we have left. Uh, this is probably going to be the end of the videos of the sap for this year and the syrup. Uh, but don't worry, I'll be showing you all the filtering and all of that. But uh, yeah. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching all these videos. Thanks for all of your feedback. I've learned a lot from you guys. Some of you are experts. Uh, I'm definitely not an expert. So please don't ever think I'm an expert because I'm not. I'm learning as I go. This is year three, so I have a lot to learn still. I haven't been doing it very long. But uh, I love it. It's a good time. I will say it's it's stressful at times because you know you got kids, you got a life that it's hard, and you have to devote a lot of time to this. And I don't want to devote as much time, I guess, because I want to be with the family more, and I have a lot going on. I'm busy, so it, it is hard. You know, late nights, stuff like that. I'm doing what I can. Uh, so sometimes it gets stressful because you know you have a like hundred gallons of sap, and you think like, oh, I don't want it to go bad. Um, but you make do. Kate's Kate's a really good supporter. She's always supporting me and helps me find a way. Um, so yeah, it's going well. Um, I think next year I'll have a better setup. I'll have a better evaporator. That should help. Uh, maybe boil more gallons per hour, uh, and then I shouldn't have any issues. Um, hopefully not. We'll see. I also really need to look into a reverse osmosis system. That would really speed things up, and I think cut down a lot of the boiling time and probably re remove some of that stress. But I appreciate all the feedback, all of the questions, all of that. And uh, thanks for watching this season, guys. We'll be back next year with maple syrup videos. But don't worry, because we're going to have a lot of videos this year um, from learning how to woodwork, learning how to run the CNC, uh, just working more at my parents more. I'm going to start doing a lot of videos of that. Kate's got a lot of cooking videos coming up. Um, so yeah, please stay tuned. we we got a lot of good things in the works. Uh, we appreciate all of you guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, we appreciate all that you guys have done for us, all that you share. If you hear that noise, Ty's running the garden hose right now, so I gotta go. We will see you on the next video, guys. Thanks.